you know, I don't think I need to really explain how radical and silly that idea is. If anyone knows about the, the story of Joan of Arc, everyone knows why she was burned at the stake. Well, one of the um, arguments, one of the, one, of, the, one of the arguments that the the um, witches make to you know the Wiccans and the and the people that are uh, you know that are into witchcraft that say it has nothing to do with Satanism is that the only reason the witches uh, confessed to being Satanists is because they were being tortured, and and one of the things that I've always said is if if you're going to be tortured and die anyway. You know, if you're going to be tortured and die anyway, if you're convinced that they're going to kill you, why would you admit to something that you had nothing to do with? Why would you – if you know they're not going to stop and you know they're going to kill you, then why would you admit to something like that in that time period? You know, By admitting to it, you're only making sure that they're going to kill you. You know what I mean? Well, well, when it comes to that, um, the thing is, is that uh, in some cases – in some cases, which is confessed without torture, but under the penalty of death, some confess without either, and um, some even after they were tortured. There are accounts of some on their way to the stake to be burned were still screaming their allegiance to Satan and oh, yeah. the blessing from the priest. That you know, so that shows that at least some of them were actual were devil worshippers. Mm -hmm. But the thing about torture is, um, one thing I would say, I guess, to be the devil's advocate here is that. Uh, you know, it's like that old Daffy Duck cartoon. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but it's the one where Daffy Duck is abducted by some gangsters, and they're convinced he can lay golden eggs for some reason, and he knows he can't, so he's running from them, and they finally catch him, and they put him on the box, and they hold a gun to Daffy Duck's head, and they tell him to lay a golden egg, and then Daffy Duck shits out a golden egg, and then Daffy Duck says, well, it's amazing what you can do when there's a gun held to your head. So, you know, when it comes to the torture, <laughs> when it's... When it comes to the uh, torture part, is uh, you'd be, sur you know, especially once you've gone through a few for a few days, you know, Nero. I would, I would say that you'd be surprised what you would say under, you know, right. having the uh, having the boots done to you and whatnot. You know, I mean, even if someone told you to, someone told you to admit that, you know, you're the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. You know, you'd probably do it after. Yeah. After having the boots put on for a little bit. Oh, and for those of you who don't know, really, really, real, real quick, the boots. There's two forms of the boots. One is they take a, a set of iron boots and they heat them up until they're red hot and they stick your feet in them. You know, no more description needed for that one. And the other form was is you'd sit on your, uh, 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 you'd sit straight up with your legs straight out and you'd put your legs into what was like cut out like the bottom half of a boot that went up past your knee, and then there was the top half of the boot, they would lower down onto it, but it was slightly smaller than the bottom half, so the top half would pinch your legs against the bottom one, and that's painful enough, but then once it was on there, they would beat on it with a sledgehammer until you confessed. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I agree with you, especially if you're, you know, if you're delusional and you're you're not quite with it. But I mean, I, I don't see any reason why somebody would confess confess to being a Satanist if if they knew that was going to be a death sentence for them. You know what I mean? If they knew it was yeah, an absolute yeah. death sentence, why would you confess to it if it wasn't true? You know, especially well, I mean, if you weren't, especially if you weren't being tortured in those cases. You know? Well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if, if if you weren't, especially, but you know, um, um, there is one sad case I want to bring up, um, um, that happened. Is uh, there, there's this one time when someone was tortured to confess to the Satanism. They were tortured. They confessed. They were tortured to confess that they had dug up children from graveyards and eaten them. And they were tortured to, you know, even to name which graves and the kids and stuff, you know, with a bunch of leading questions, and they confessed to digging up and eating these children. And here's where it gets really fucked up and twisted, where you could tell whoever was running this, whoever was running this trial didn't give a shit about killing a devil worshiper. They were just a sadistic bastard in power. Is after they confessed, they went to the cemetery and found that all of the graves and the children that were named were still tucked comfortably in their coffins, in their graves, and none of the children had been dug up. It didn't matter. They were still burnt alive. Oh, I know. That's that's something else I wanted to talk about too. While while I'm thinking about it, because um, 
uh, you know, Diane Vera responded to that that um, article about the Catholic Church uh, starting to do train people on exorcism and starting to talk to people more about about uh, Satanism because of the growth of Satanism on the internet. And one of the things that people were commenting in regards to Diane Vera's arguments, oh, there's so much evidence that ritual abuse happens, Diane Vera just doesn't want to see it. And Diane gave a detailed, you know, refutation of all the facts. Everything they brought up, she just basically slammed it all. And they still didn't want to see it. I mean, there there are just some people, no matter how much you tell them, they believe that their ministers are telling them the truth. They believe that these Christian ministers are good people, and they just can't believe that anybody would lie to them. And that's why when you have ignorant people who don't know their history, people can lie to them so easily because they'll say, oh, my minister would never lie to me. Well, yes, your minister will fucking lie to you, and he's done it many times, and it's happened throughout history. You know, the Christians have done it. They've made these same allegations against Satanists that we're, we're baby killers, that we drink blood, that we do all these things. We dig up graves. These allegations have been going on for hundreds of years, and it's no different today. And there's nothing that you can do to convince the people that want to believe that, that Satanists don't do it. And it just proves it. Because yeah. Diane gave them all the historical evidence and all the information she had available to argue. And they still wanted to believe it, even though she refuted every bit of it with fact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fucked up. I mean, I mean, it's just the Christians have been lying and concocting shit, making wild stories that people Christian ministers have been lying to people and getting them to believe it ever since the night Peter went and dug Jesus' rotten corpse out of a fucking tomb, carried it off somewhere and buried it, and then told everyone that he came to him and told him he had risen. They've been lying ever since then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing how many people will believe it. It's, it's the same thing with the Illuminati stuff. Even though you tell them all the historical data shows that the Illuminati do not exist in the way that people claim they do, they'll still believe it just because. And you know, and what Kurt said about that is that not only do the Illuminati not exist anymore, the way people say they do, is that even when they did exist over 200 years ago, they didn't even exist then in the way people say they do. It's just, you know what shocks me about the Illuminati thing is I don't understand why of all the different secret societies in the world, what made them so special for people who want to pick on that one? I mean, why aren't people always saying it's the Hellfire Club or it's the something, something, something? Uh, well, well, I guess you'd have to pick one or the other if you're going to pick one, wouldn't you? I mean, you just have to pick one. I suppose it's an arbitrary choice. I can't see no better, no better reason. So, yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> God, but yeah, I mean, um, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what this show's about: trying to get to the to the facts. And if see the difference between us and the average uh, person, I guess out there, most of the average Satanists that I've dealt with on the internet is that if we're wrong about something, we'll admit it. If we can find the facts to verify that we're wrong about something, then we will admit it. I mean, and that's the kind of people that we are. And a lot of these people, even if you show them the fact, even if you show them they're wrong, they'll still, you know, preach the message that they've always preached. And that's why we decided to do this, to do this show, because we wanted to try to be honest. And we're not out here trying to promote stuff that's false. If somebody shows us that we're wrong, and gives us convincing evidence that we're wrong, we'll happily come on this show and say, we're wrong, and we messed up. And and, and that's why we hope you'll listen, and that's why we hope that uh, you'll support the show, because that's what we're all about. You know? Yeah. I mean, because that's what... If there is one thing this show is free of, is selective inattention. You know, I mean, if there's... If, if there's a subject we're talking about, if there's a... You know, I mean, if it any facet of it, if, say if someone even called in and said, well, hey, 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 there's this one thing you missed about this part, and we would say, hey, well, we'll look into that, we don't know about it, and then the next show, I guarantee you, if, if we look into what someone said, and it shows that we're full of shit, we'll say loudly on the next show, hey, last time somebody called in and told us to look at something, and it turns out we're wrong, sorry to tell you all that last time, we're full of shit. I ain't got no shame in doing that. No, neither do I. I mean, just, I mean 
the whole idea is to learn and to grow and to evolve. It's not to not to sit here and preach inaccurate facts, you know. And uh, well, that's the other thing. Why we were we're kind of shocked because uh, when people find out, like you and I are traditionalists. I mean, we're we're quote unquote devil worshippers, right? But they'll in the in the, and they'll freak out because we'll have someone like say. Uh, Winter Lake or someone like that, and they'll say, "What are you? What are you going to have him on there for? He's not a traditionalist like you." That's not the point. The point is, we're supposed to be a show that's out there to educate people and to help people. And if if you're supposed to be an intelligent Satanist, then you should be able to make up your own mind whether someone's right or wrong. That's the whole point of the show. We're not here to tell you don't listen to that person or don't listen to this person. We're here to provide you with the information so you can make up your own mind, and so that people that are not in this religion can make up their own mind about what's right and what's wrong. We're trying to give you the information, not keep it from you. You know? Yeah, you know. And furthermore, for y'all, for y'all who are listening, who are who are who do call yourselves traditional Satanists or devil worshippers like us? You know the thing is, is uh, last time I checked, I don't remember hearing anything from Satan in none of the holy texts we recognize. Probably the same ones y'all recognize. I don't remember hearing anything from Satan that um, you know, we have to to only talk to Satanists as such and such that were made it that were made a denomination in the past thirty years. You know, yeah. shit. I mean, I mean the last I checked. Last time I checked, in the holy text we recognize, and probably you too, is that Satan said, you know, I allow, I allow everyone to follow the dictates of his own nature, and he that opposes me will regret it sorely. And as far as we're concerned, if someone is preaching Satanism in some form that's not some stupid, silly jackass shit about alien cults and crap, as long as someone's teaching some form of Satanism that can be helpful to people in their personal lives and doesn't disrespect Satan and the demons, and I don't think they're opposing Satan. I don't think there's anything wrong with being nice to him or even being friendly with him or even sitting or even sitting down and having a beer with him. You know, you know we talked so we talked about that. Know. We talked about that on the previous show that traditionalists don't give LeVay the respect that he deserves. They don't they treat him like like he's nobody, like he's nothing. And without him we wouldn't be here. Most of us would not be here. Um I mean he you know, codified the religion and that's the truth. And if anybody wants to argue with that, just just look at the history before LeVay. It didn't exist, or at least it was hard to find if the groups did exist. And that's the truth, and people don't like the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you know, LeVay was the first Satanist to actually have the ball to stand up on a national level and say, hey, hey I'm a devil worshiper. Try to fuck with me, Christians. First one to ever do it, and no one can argue with that. No one can yeah. argue with that. <laughs> nope. And and I know a lot of people a lot of people dislike us for that. I mean, in in my book that I that I wrote, you know, uh, Satanism: The Religious Worship of Satan and Demons, I talked bad about Levey. My views have changed since I published that book. My views have changed a lot, and I would not write some of the things I wrote in that book, and I think that's the most important thing is that Satanists need to evolve and they need to change and they need to reevaluate their ideas. And if their ideas are wrong or proven to be wrong, then they should be willing to accept that. That's what being a Satanist is. Exactly. And and one thing I want to say to some of the authors listening is that just because we're saying Satanism has to and should naturally change and evolve. It doesn't mean you have to stop being a devil worshiper. I mean, like, like me, for example, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a devil worshiper just as much as I consider myself a Thelemite. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt my devil worship any. And a while ago, you know, Nero was afraid it, was afraid it would. And then I visited him and I showed him personally the mass that my Kevin performed. And even though it has some lines from Sally in it and stuff, as you know, he even said, "Is like, you know, I expected it to be a lot worse than that. I expected it to be something I didn't like." But, but uh, it it doesn't. You can be a devil worshiper and incorporate other things and grow without av- having to to sacrifice or lessen your devotion to Satan as a deity. You just don't. That's just the way it is. But um, I, oh well, it's uh. Yeah, well, it's about time to take a break. After we come back from this break, we'll be back with Winter Lake, the author of the Satanic Paradigm. We'll see you in a few minutes, or in a few seconds. I'll see you then. <laughs> 